uh, first theme that arises from this is the wealth and fund planning. Right. So if you see, if you have a business uh, which is the sole business in a family, how do you sort of ensure that the funds are actually kept separate for personal use and for business use? And how do you sort of use those funds to sort of diversify and allow different family members to sort of start into different businesses or even expand the same business? So to my mind, that becomes an important theme for almost everybody when they have uh, uh, a family business like yours. That's one uh, theme that's important. The other thing that's also important is if you have one business and when you have multiple family members, the dilemma is always, do you have all the members come into the family and try and look at different aspects of the same business or then you innovate and you know, that's the important thing. At that stage, you're forced to innovate to see what new things can you do, which new areas you can get into. And if you marry that with the fund, uh, fund planning aspect that I mentioned, you can actually sort of build a business or multiple businesses that can be very large actually. Right, right. So uh, we, 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 are, uh, we are only trying to expand our own line of business rather than, you know, diversifying. And I don't see any kind of interest that this next generation have in, in, um, in, in diversifying. In fact, the fourth generation which is in the making are already, you know, discussing about taking it to a next level, the same P&R brand, and maybe outside the country because, uh, you know, and uh, I think it's the passion that drives and if they have passion in any, any, any other product or any other subject which they want to take it up, they're welcome to do so. So we're not, uh, you know, forcing or coercing them to, uh, to take up the family trade and business. I think the pattern we've been noticing is that the second generation family, right, they are, they are global, right, they are in the sense that typically the second and the third generation, right, they are, they are more exposed, they are more global citizens of the world, right? So they have kind of studied abroad, they have kind of been in touch with technology and when they come back, they want to also be in the family business but they also want to have touch with what is happening outside because it helps them bring the innovation back to the family, right? So that is a very interesting trend we are seeing. Okay. But along with that, the other point is that, you know, when you talk to a second generation uh, entrepreneur, right? second generation family family member, they are very excited when they meet entrepreneurs outside, but they are not the decision makers. So you can, you can see that encouraging them to go out and look at the what is happening in the market in terms of what are the new innovations happening, just because I think they want to enable them to understand the competitive market outside. But I think the second generation's ability to influence a lot of decisions related to the family still stays with the members who have started the family. That is a pattern we see, right? But hopefully, yeah. I mean, that will also change over time, right? And they don't have controlling majority as a family. They are still looked at a little bit of wariness and little bit of skepticism there, right? What you gave an example is... Uh, his greatest fear uh, is a decay setting in as generations go by uh, because... Uh, and because of that, he's... That is the subject of much research also. By yeah, and, and I think that, that has always been his uh, great uh, fear. fear. Mm. Uh, so uh, he made certain moves uh, from a very early, uh, uh, since we were very young, or me and my mm. brother were very young. Uh, that is different, right? We studied in America, but we had to pay back uh, every rupee, for example, that uh, he paid for our education. Uh, okay. uh, so we never got pocket money that we all, you know, we had two jobs, three jobs. Uh, and uh, after graduating, I became an investment banker in New York and London, not because I liked investment banking. I think it might be the worst thing ever. It's because I had to pay back my father. Actually, he says when he's dead and gone, he might give that money back without interest. Uh, and, and then when we came back, uh, his rule was always we can intern in any of his businesses, but we're not allowed to join his businesses. Uh, okay. They're professional CEOs who run them. And uh, we are just not allowed to join because we haven't proven ourselves, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So either you work abroad for many years and then you deserve to come in or you don't. So we interned in his businesses and now me and my brother have started our own businesses. He's given us the exact equal amount of money uh, to start our businesses. My brother runs a fashion tech company. I run a real estate company. We've grown our businesses through outside investment, not through him. What we used to do, why is this, does this need to change? So there's always a resistance to change and the younger generation always changes. So when somebody uses the word permitted to change, that's a very interesting turn of phrase for me. <laughs> so what do you mean is that fathers always, fathers, not, not only fathers, 
any generation that's passing on legacy to other, other generation, what I, what I believe and what I feel is that they should encourage their next generation to actively participate in their core competence. That's how family business thrives. Okay. The core 